All right, success. <laughs> this is awesome. Success. We got it done. Judge Joe, yes, Brown, thank you so much for uh, joining me on this Evanston Magazine little forum that I'm putting together, grabbing content. You are uh, obviously a uh, icon in, in the world, let alone in the black community. So thank you. I don't so know much. about all that. I'm just me. Yeah, you well, know, you're, you're a brother, uh, Your Honor, but um, there are a lot of uh, guys who, you know, look up to you and listen to you, and um, I, I am one of them, so I'll just give you yours while, give you flowers while you're around, brother. That's what's Well, happening. thank you. That's by default, because there is not enough black men out there trying to lead or qualifying for being leaders. What they hold out to us is pretty sorry. Uh, your ability to play basketball, play hoe, or get out on your knees, pucker up so you can please somebody else that you're working for, that doesn't make you a leader. That makes you a monkey on a little cute chain with an organ grinder playing it while you bounce around for the entertainment of the audience so they will put coins in the hat sitting on the ground. That is, that is a, a fair assessment of what's out here. That's a, a great way to start this conversation because uh, I, I appreciate how you carried yourself throughout the courtroom uh, recordings that I've got to watch and how you addressed a lot of the men who or guys who came in front of you uh, that were not pr uh, portraying exact manhood. Um, it's, it's, it's rare that we have the opportunity to even be able to one, record that because we deal with it on a daily basis and we're unable to really voice it, you know? See, what the, what they didn't get was 10 years before that, uh, I was doing studies about what would reduce felony to recidivism, and the only thing they did was manhood. Okay. And it reduced it from the statewide average of 80% down to 18% in my courtroom. So what I was using the opportunity to do was conduct a man-up campaign for 15-some years, and they didn't get it, and they kept trying to go around it, and I kept saying, no, it's got to be real. Right. California Supreme Court rendered a dis an opinion in writing 23 pages that, had, that said it had to be real, but they did not get it. And but they I is who? So Hollywood. Okay. They kept having the agendas. Why don't you say? I said, no. But, to, but everybody would love this woman. That I said, I don't care whether they like it or not. That isn't the way it goes. See, the way they would like to run it is, okay, let's take this thing with Breonna Taylor. Everybody's talking about this young brother who's a prosecutor as a sellout. Actually, he's not. He's got balls because he did just exactly what he was supposed to do. See, black folk don't pay attention anymore. 50 years ago, everybody could have told you what happened because they said, look, man, dude that opened fire i'm surprised they didn't jack him up but since he had a right to shoot and the other folk had a right to shoot poor Brianna just got caught in the crossfire shit happens man you know it's cold-blooded but you don't know nobody got caught in the crossfire nobody knew anybody did not there was nobody that would be in the discussion that didn't know somebody that got caught in the crossfire right so right now, they've been conditioned to, oh, my God, it's violence and everybody's going to pay. But you see, what happens is there's a difference between criminal homicide and negligent homicide. Now, the police department screwed all up, and the municipality paid out $12 million to the family. It might have been 35 or 40-something if it had gone to trial, but it was a good thing, settlement. Okay. But why don't they prosecute anybody? Because if anybody had been prosecuted, it would have been as big a travesty as that thing that happened to Dr. Cosby. That was one of the most egregiously messed up things I've ever seen in my 50 years of doing law. But that's you. another thing. So, well, they've been doing it. It's our turn. No, you don't want it your turn because when you set a precedent, it has a real weird way since law is a two-edged sword of coming back and cutting your own throat. You know, okay. that sort of Democles is hanging by the thread over somebody's head, that's right. what it is. So the young brother, at 34, I think he's kind of young to hold his position because I think you need considerably more experience in life in order to deal with it properly, but he's trying, but 
he had balls. He did what he was supposed to do and basically told everybody else to F off. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, whether you like it or not. And see, this generation and the one right behind it, they're so deep off into everything has a damn excuse. They don't get this old thing, which was, well, the Army used to have it. Yes, sir. No, sir. No excuse, sir. Okay, I either did it or I couldn't do it. No, this is why it didn't work out, bit, you know. Okay. You either can or you cannot or, you know, no excuses. You don't try, you do, or you don't do. <laughs> but we don't get it. There's always an excuse. It's white supremacy, so I can sit on my lazy ass and don't try. It's white supremacy, so I don't go to school and pick up what I need to do what I need to do. It's white supremacy, so I can't show up on time when I'm trying to get somebody to patronize my black business. You know, uh, it's white supremacy, which is an excuse to go out and pimp your women and turn them into hoes like Cardi B, whatever, and you sit there <laughs> and you listen to Cardi B. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, what's that name? Um, the one that twerked out there in the uh, uh, at that L.A. Lakers game. You know, oh, you talking Lizzo. about the big girl Lizzo, yeah, big old lizard Lizzo with her butt <laughs> out and a G string on in front of that crowd. That is disgusting. It so is. I, I, I appreciate it. That, that's bad for the young girls, and that's bad for young. Uh oh. Upon oh yeah, man, hot. No, she is. No, yeah. And, and we listen to gangster rap video. My bitches and my hoes. You don't want a hoe and you don't want a bitch. Leave them somewhere else on the corner. Get you a lady who is a woman who will back you instead of trying to hustle you, turn you into a trick and talk stupid nonsense about breaking you down to size so you can be put into manageable pieces. <clears throat> you know, that, that's, you know what that is? That is a reflection of what the slave owners did who had big plantations Mm -hmm. When they were taught that if you made the elements of slavery part of the slave's culture, they'd make slaves of themselves and you wouldn't even have to worry about it. Yes, I do. I, I do used to remember. raise horses. Yeah. I used to raise horses. I had a bunch on a ranch out in California. My ex wanted to raise horses. I found out that one of the precepts that the slave owners had was very true. You cannot domesticate a wild herd stat. And they had all these Mustangs that the Department of the Interior would auction off. Yeah. You were supposed to have them fixed or neutered. Every now and then somebody wanted one to breed, but you could not ride them. But what you could do is you could domesticate a wild herd female. Mm -hmm. And if you had her and bred her with a wild stallion, the foal she had, she'd basically domesticate them for you. So once you domesticated the female horse, they would domesticate all of their offspring and their offspring would domesticate their offspring. So you just dealt with the fine points rather than the raw breaking. And that's what they did to black culture is they imbued part of it with a certain outlook on life, worldview, uh, certain realities. And one of the reflections is this, Thing where people hustle white supremacy. You know, that's their game. They hustle white supremacy. They write books about it. They talk about it. And basically the way it translates is not what he even perceives. The way it comes out is don't even bother trying. It's hopeless. Just give up. It, you can blame this while you've given up. No, hell, we used to have to deal with lions, tigers, wolves, hyenas, grizzly bears, polar bears, uh, saber tooth cat, short face, face cave bear, dire wolves, and we prevail. Now, the tiger used to be king of the jungle. Now, he, you are. We need to protect the tigers and the mama elephants and the polar bear. And poor Oscar, who used to be a wolf, is chained out in the kennel in the winter and he may never know love. So give 1995 to ASPCA. You know, in 1995 to BLM so they can save the biped Africans that got imported to work on the farms that escaped. You know, and we think this way. 
And as long as you get psyched out by your own stupid outlook on life, ain't no point, man. Why you sit up here and start telling the black man he got to go do this, man, when white supremacy going to keep him down? Well, if you want to keep your dumb behind down, you go right ahead. I'm a man. And even if I got to die in the face of that damn adversity, I'll be damned if I'm going to stay down. It's time black people to get up and act like men and women instead of falling for this slave propaganda that got put in slave heads, that got put in slave culture, that got passed on after slavery was over. And it, look, look how stupid we are. Juneteenth. I'm in my 70s, and for most of my life, 65 years of it, Juneteenth was supposed to be June 19th, 1866. Mm -hmm. In the last few years, they changed it to 1865. You know why? The, uh, what, that was the, no, I'm going to listen to you. Go ahead, tell me why. Okay, why they changed it to 1865. If it's 1866, the Emancipation Proclamation, Proclamation went into effect April 1863. That's three years, two months before. Okay. The 13th Amendment, <clears throat> freeing the slaves, went into effect in January 1865. That's a year and a half before that. The Civil War was over by the end of April, 1865. So that's a year and two months these damn fool animals kept their dumb behinds as slaves down in Texas. And the bad part about it is they had sent a cavalry detachment of black troopers down there right as the end of April to tell slaves all over the Old South they no longer had to deal with slavery. They told these damn fools yeah, nobody called me. I ain't leaving them. And it took some white Navy officers off of a frigate in June 1866, where these sorry MFs had been slaves for three years, a year and a half, longer than they had to be. So now they changed it from 1866 to 1865, so it doesn't look so bad. Right. See, that's sorry. Yeah. And to even celebrate that damn obscenity bothers me. Mm, I love it. Yes, sir. I love it. Mm. Yeah, in other words, you're so anxious to have a history, you create one. Right. You got to seize on it. You know, like that's this thing. I mean, religion's religion, but I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Black folk running around trying to claim they were the original Jews and Jesus was a Jew. So what? You know, do you have it as something that motivates you or is it something that keeps your behind passive with an excuse for why you are in your position? That's what the slave owners wanted you to think. They imposed religion. So Jesus was testing you. And if you endured your trial and tree of you, get your pie in the sky when you die. You know, you don't understand cause and effect, not what I do, not what I did, not what I can do, not what preparations I can make, what discernments I need to divine. You know, it's all about the Lord working mysterious ways and he testing your faith. Oh, hell no. Get up and do it. Don't pray. Get off your knees. You can't do anything on your knees except be a supplicant, and that's when you respect the authority. Right. Uh, the other thing, we can't work with no white folk or no Mexicans. We got to do a black thing, but you ain't doing a damn thing. Plus, the bottom line is, it's been my long experience that it's very hard for somebody to work with another somebody if one of them feels inferior to the other. If you feel like you're equal, you can deal with anybody. Right. And then the know? truth is, we are equal. There is no unequalness. We just accept that subservient mindset. Well, you so, got to think equal. Yeah. See, like, what, what would we do to IDH? Uh, look, baby, this is mama. Mm-hmm. I know you got your ass paid yesterday. All this good loving I done give you this month, which was twice. Uh, I know you coming over here with something for mama. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He comes over there, gives us some change. He kind of dusty because he's got a hard job. He drives a ragged rod. The kids are looking at him, looking down on him because they can hear mama talk about it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you better hurry up and bust this nuts. You ain't wallowing up in this shit all night long off of this little piece of change. 
Man. And he got up, wiped himself off hardly, and got to his car parked behind the dumpster to leave when she on the phone. Baby, this mama. Mm -hmm. Mama sure would like to see you. You know that ring you wanted in American Loan? Well, we can go shopping tomorrow. Come over and put that pipe out up in the tunnel, baby. Uh-huh. <laughs> so your mama's acting like a hoe. What do you think your children going to act like? Our children going to act like? That's true. Now, you mentioned this Cardi B situation, which I think is a phenomenon that we really need to get hold of as black folks. And my thing is, is all the stuff that she has done publicly to humiliate black people and herself as a woman, she actually had the gall to be upset that her marriage didn't work out. Oh, a hoe going into a marriage tries to treat the marriage like a whole relationship with a trick on the street. See, in other words, the man she's with is a trick. Let me tell you something else. I got a whole lot of rent, rentals paid, a lot of secretarial paychecks paid, a lot of other bills and income in from representing hoes and pimps 40 years ago. Mm. Pimps are slime and hoes. Let me tell you something. You take 100 hoes and 95 of them are lesbian. Five, three of them are bi and two of them are straight, and only one of them got the sense to make the money for herself to do something with it. Mm. So wow. she doesn't like men to begin with, and her attitude is, if they want to pay some change for this down here, you know, more power to me and the hell with them. So she get into a marriage, she'd rather be dealing with a girlfriend. Mm. You know, and the dancers are like that too. Yeah. Um, take your booty to the pole. If you look carefully, you'll see it. Oh, I saw that. Oh, oh if you I saw look that. carefully. Oh my least, God. <laughs> at least a third of the dancers are trannies. They're drag queens. I didn't even watch so it. I the just theory so, so. is the theory is that if you go to the places where black folk who just got out the penitentiary hang young black folk, then you can get to them to get them out to vote. For who? For Biden and calm Queen Camilla, all right? Uh, so you get this out. And then the fallacy of the thing is, is first off, most strippers don't like men anyway. They're still in that 95 out of 100. Uh, <laughs> three more go both ways and two straight. Yeah. And first off, that group they're trying to approach for the last 50, three years since they passed the constitutional amendment allowing 18 year olds to vote that segment they're trying to reach only has between one and a half and a little less than two percent turnout every damn election in the last 53 years it isn't going to change next mm -hmm. thing you just get out of the penitentiary in georgia you can't vote because your citizenship rights have been stripped which gets back into all of these fools talking about oh wow you know, they paid off all of the fines and costs in Florida so these people can vote fact check. It's a lie. Because what it says is, as a prerequisite to petitioning a court to have your voting rights restored, all pending fines and costs must be satisfied. So there's not enough time between now and November for somebody to go vote, even if all of his fines and costs got paid off. And some criminal court judge might say, hell no, the punishment was imposed on the defendant, not on somebody to step in and ease the pain. He will pay his own fine. <clears throat> wow. So it's just PRBS. Let's take last night in the debate, for example. Okay. They kept talking about, and you see it all over the place on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, ignorant Negroes bought into CNN nonsense. And they say, why didn't he come out and go against white supremacy? So the specific question, and I looked at it four times, replayed it, <laughs> slowed it down, amplified it, and the question was, is, are you against white supremacy? And his answer was, sure. He didn't yell it, but right. when he kept going, you get this thing in the law that Biden, who claimed he was this defense lawyer before he got into politics, which meant he was a defense lawyer for about 16 months, which is just enough time to find your dumb behind uh, in a position of knowing how to get to the courthouse rather than knowing what to do it. The question that is being posed as a response, objection, Your Honor, state the basis for your objection, counselor, question asked and answered. 
So what has been clear on every reasonable form of media for the last 20 years, he's been saying racism's bad, white supremacy is bad, Klan's bad, they need to be something about it. He did all, they did all of that stuff about, oh, he indicated that he's going to go do this and he told them to stand by, he said, stand down or we will, and that's code from about 40 years ago, uh, hey man, you better chill on what you're doing because you about to get visited and some behind about to get whipped. See, that wasn't a call to action, that was a call to behave, and it was a direct threat, but it was a veiled threat, but these ignoramuses don't even get it. So I mean, that, that was what you got. Uh, you saw, a thing that I find absolutely astonishing. Uh, Bird, who was a grand dragon of the Ku Klux Klan, mm -hmm. U.S. Senator <clears throat> in the 21st century, right before he ran for vice president, Biden gave the eulogy for that racist dog. Mm -hmm. 1967, I heard him, because I was a grown man then, I heard him talk about his idols and mentors were Faubus, who stood in the doorway and said, Negras will not come in this high school. We will have no Negras trying to come around decent white folk. That was when Eisenhower had to send down 101st Airborne into Little Rock, Arkansas in the 50s. We had racist George Wallace, who fortunately got put in a wheelchair, unfortunately not just did it, okay? He spoke and campaigned for Biden when he was running for state office in 67. Faubus, an old man racist from Arkansas, spoke the campaign for him. We've already talked about him in the doorway. You had Stennis, who insultingly has a 110,000 ton nuclear carrier named after him with about two to 3,000 black sailors on it, suffering the indignity of serving on board a U.S. Navy ship named after one of the race, worst races in 20th century American history, okay? Mm -hmm. It goes on. And this fool who had them campaign for him because he impressed them as an intern. This is the one all the colored folk are just, oh my God, we got to vote for Biden. Why? To turn out Trump. Why you want to turn him out? He's just an embarrassment. Didn't I see you the other night hanging with one of your homeboys? You were standing by your car. It was a blue Ford. You were yelling MF as loud as you were could. Talking about you just got laid by Tamika the night before. Hey, you know, you was calling, man, where's your B? And, you know, MF this and that. So you get upset because somebody else said he grabbed some pussy? You know, what do you think? They were yelling to everybody in the damn parking lot. Oh. You don't want him to be like you. <laughs> and by the way, let me say this. I have seen personally live every single presidential debate since the first one when John F. Kennedy and Nixon went at it. Right. Until you got that shyster, that actor, St. Ron the Reagan, in office where everything was carefully scripted. They used to fight. St. Ronda Reagan made it so all he said was pablum with a smile, and he said key words and phrases that would evoke the subconscious tendencies of his listeners to hear what they wanted to hear rather than what was not said. It's a propaganda technique. So starting with that shyster Ronald Reagan in 1980 forward, that's when people got nice. Before that, they weren't so nice. Okay. And you ever heard of Harry Truman? Yes, sir. Yes. They called him Give Him Hell Harry. You know, like, why? Uh, one of his daughters was a professional singer. Okay. And some critic wrote a negative review. <laughs> so the president of the United States is on the phone talking about put that SOB on the damn line. I'm coming over to kick his ass. And the spectacle of the president of the United States drive, driven over to the office building where this guy worked by the Secret Service and him standing out in the hallway, literally trying to kick the door in to whip some behind, you know, like yeah. that's the way it used to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or like uh, when 
uh, Marilyn Monroe sang happy birthday to JFK in the White House basement in front of the whole press corps. What right. really happened was she took four records to do a full strip tease, was walking around naked, sat in everybody's lap, let everybody suck on her nipples. She took JFK, put him in the middle of the floor in a straight back chair, pulled his pants down his ankles, sucked and swallowed, and then went around and flipped off of the stage in front of the whole press corps. But that didn't get out. See, it was a man time. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Uh, kind of you telling me that that is real? That's real. I met two of LBJ's uh, sons. One of them was born in 1966. He's got a slight suntan. He was born to the White House, uh, a White House press sec secretary who was coffee colored black. Okay. And another one was born to a white woman, Marie Brown, in 1965. She introduced me to both of them. Mm. And they looked just like him. So the president got two children while he's in office. Right. Wow. Okay. Now, LBJ is supposed to be old line racist, right? Yeah. What they never told you was mm. he had a dog. He liked his dog. Okay. He also, out of the goodness of his heart, started a school to teach minorities, blacks and browns, to read and write, and he taught in the school. So okay. the sheriff killed his dog. He got pissed, so he had all of the blacks and browns registered to vote. He did it. He got them all to the polls, and that's how he got his first elected office. So okay. when he went on from there, he said, some people think I'm going to do some things that they expect because I'm from the South. He said, but I'm the president of the whole United States and there's going to be some changes. Right. Okay. So what he did is he withdrew Kennedy's weak civil rights bill because it was weak. Uh -huh. He substituted a much stronger one, but he told all his old redneck buddies, now you're going to give me what I want. I'm going to kick your ass because I'm going to make you look like a common loving bastard if you don't give me what I want. Right. Now, you know what he did? He made it a military bill. It says in the preamble, whereas the United States is in a life or death confirmation, confrontation with the forces of communism and totalitarianism around the world, whereas, et cetera, et cetera, whereas the morale of the troops is most important to the defense of the nation, whereas the morale of certain troops who have long been integrated into the military is diminished by the behavior of the local populations in the areas of certain military bases, whereas the base commanders have no authority and power to do that, et cetera, et cetera. Be it resolved that we have a need for this civil rights bill so the morale of the armed forces of the United States is not significantly diminished. Okay. That's what he did. See, he was smart. Yes. Absolutely. Now, he ran afoul of the cupcakes <clears throat> out there because they didn't like him with war. And frankly, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. It was way over his head. He relied on his generals to his detriment, which, you know, when I look at some of the folk who are also holding themselves out like Kanye Kardashian, what the hell do you know about the military? Because that'll get you in trouble. You know, people get killed all the time in the world now. Right, absolutely. What do you have out there? Obama Tang, the uh, mulatto Kenyan Bush bunny that was in the office, you know, uh, his adoptive father, and see, they don't bring this out. His adoptive father came to my attention more than 50 years ago. We studied him in comparative international criminal law. Okay. There was a warrant out for his arrest from The Hague alleging that he was responsible for killing between half million and three quarters of a million people as a crime against humanity for mass murder. Wow. And the U.S. was intervening to keep that from being served because he was running the contracted spy stuff for the CIA in Vietnam, North and South, where there was a hot dust up going on about to. Laos, Cambodia, uh, Indonesia, which, by the way, at the time Obama got adopted, was listed as a communist country. Okay. All right. All right. So is that the murder that they were uh, trying to pin on? Uh, the murders that happened in um, in uh, uh, Vietnam and those no, other states? No, this was in was Indonesia. He ran the death squads for the Indonesian government. In okay. other words, he was Heinrich Himmler for yeah. the Indonesian government like Heinrich Himmler was for the Nazis. Right. And the no, deal I... that makes it an interesting comparison 
is the population of 